Are you mentally stronger than most people? Well, you're about to find out in this video because I'm going to tell you the five signs that indicate whether you are or you're not. And there's also a good chance to self-analyze yourself because I promise you there's at least one thing that you need to work on that you might be neglecting. The first sign is that you are kind. And you might be thinking kindness. Doesn't kindness signify weakness? Actually, that can't be further from the truth. I mean, think of the opposite. People that pick on others, people that are rude. This stems from a lack of self-confidence and insecurity. So for them to feel better, they need to pick on others to make others feel inferior to them. You see, if you're mentally strong, you don't need to prove anything to anyone. All your validation comes from yourself and what you've done for yourself. And so you're willing to help others, but not at the cost of yourself, your own happiness, your own goal. The best analogy to put it is that while you fill up your own cup, you want to fill up the cup of other people as well, as opposed to dumping other people's cups in order to fill up your own cup. And you can probably relate to this. Think of the last time you did something nice kind or good for someone else. You automatically feel better by doing it. It rewards you because you're doing an act of service. Actually, I want to show you. I read this book called Think Like a Monk by Jay Shet. And when you think of monks, you automatically link it to people that are mentally strong and have a lot of mental control. And in this book, what he was saying is that one of the main traits monks do is acts of service on a daily basis. And monks believe in good karma. Essentially what goes around comes around. And they do this through compassion, acts of humility. And in a way, in order to reach this higher level of awareness, of enlightenment, it's detaching yourself from your ego and understanding that helping others is what builds purpose and fulfillment in one's life. The second sign is that you adapt to change. This is a pretty important one. A lot of times when I do lives, YouTube videos, in the comment sections, people tell me how they're struggling with certain situations. And oftentimes the main advice I give them is that they can change their situation. But the thing about change is that it's something extremely scary, especially when you've been in a specific situation for so long, that's what you're used to. And so changing it is essentially stepping into the unknown. You don't know the outcome of it. And so you rather stay in the situation and face it, deal with it, although you don't like it because the alternative, stepping into the unknown, is a harder and scarier decision to take. And this goes with anything, whether you're in a program in school that you don't like, whether you're working a job that you don't like, whether you're in a relationship that's dragging you down, whether there's friends around you that you want to eliminate yourself from, but you're scared of doing it. Sign number three is that you have self-control. This is also a very important one that a lot of people neglect being able to control yourself and your own emotions, knowing how to react, when to react without being impulsive. When you think of someone that doesn't have self-control, what does that stem from? It stems from defending something, but what are you defending? You're defending yourself, you're defending your ego because you want to prove something to others and you depend on other people's validation to then feel good. For example, imagine you were playing basketball and someone on the sideline goes, yo, you suck, man. You can't hit a three-pointer. You can't dribble for shit. You're horrible. Someone that lacks self-control will get affected by that. Yo, I can hit more threes and you can, I can dribble better than you. Come on the court, let's do 1v1. Yo, what's your fucking problem, this and that. But someone that has self-control won't even care because they don't need their validation. First of all, they're on the sidelines, so it doesn't matter. And second of all, you know yourself best. So even if you're not good at basketball, who cares? You already know that. So someone else saying it doesn't matter because you're not trying to prove anything to anyone else. Sign number four is that you're willing to accept failure. You see, failure in itself is a horrible feeling. You tried something and it didn't work out. There's nothing more crushing than failure. And most people, when they fail, they tie that to quitting. I tried something, it didn't work, I failed, so I'm gonna quit. It's not meant for me. And quitting is okay, but you shouldn't quit automatically just because you fail. You need to understand that failure is a lesson and simply a stepping stone to you improving yourself if you allow it. You see, the best teacher in life is experiences, especially bad experiences. Getting fired from a job, losing a friend, going through a breakup. But the thing about bad experiences, the thing about failures is that it gives you energy, a type of energy. You see, when you feel mad, when you feel sad, when you feel like quitting, when you feel all these emotions, good, now you have a drive, you have this energy. Now you can either sit with it, let it affect you, let it get to you, or you can take this energy that you now have and convert it into something good. So you feel angry, good, take that energy, take it to the gym, go work out. You feel depleted, good, take that to the whiteboard, take that to your computer, acknowledge what you did wrong and move forward with making adjustments to then create something better. Finally, sign number five, which is something that I had to work on a lot 
what is being okay with letting other people down. Up here, this contradicts the first example you said, you need to be kind to other people. Yeah, that's true, but I also said not at the cost of your own happiness and your own goal. In this world, you need to be selfish, but not at the cost of other people. Going back to the example, don't dump the cups of other people simply to fill up your own. But focus on filling your own cup before you start being generous and filling everyone else's cup. You see, often what we decide to do, our actions are highly impacted and affected by the people that we care about in our lives. Our friends, our parents, our teachers. You start wanting to do something and automatically the opinions come in saying, no, you shouldn't do that. It's not good for you. And so by not listening to them, you're essentially letting them down, but temporarily. You see, the thing is the people that care about you, they want the best interest from you. It's coming from a good place, but the thing is they're basing it off of their own experiences. And the beauty of this is that if you truly believe in what you're doing, you'll understand that eventually they'll understand too. Because eventually what you're deciding to do will pay off to the point where they'll see it for themselves. And I remember back in high school, I was in this business class. And at the time I used to be doing Instagram growth. So all the time I was on my phone messaging these potential clients, pitching to them my service, getting new clients, essentially trying to sell my growth service. But one day I was in this business class sitting on my phone, trying to grow my business and trying to get more clients. And my teacher caught me and he confiscated my phone for the rest of the class. And when the class ended, I went back to my teacher to get my phone. And I told him at the same time, I said, just so you know, I'm not on my phone doing random stuff. I'm actually trying to grow this business that I've been starting. And he looked at me dead in the eyes and said, Pierre, if you don't focus in school, if you don't pursue business in college and university, you will never have a successful business in your life. And that hit hard. I mean, it was my business teacher telling me to my face that I will never have a successful business if I continue doing what I'm doing. So I did exactly what he told me not to do, but I proved him wrong. But it's just an example that goes to show that in the moment, my teacher, he cared about me. And this was the advice that he was giving me. But just because he had his own experience with this doesn't mean he's right and doesn't mean it applies to me. Anyways, let me know in the comments down below how many of these you actually do. I'm going to be reading through them. I'm curious to know. I mean, I'm still on this journey. Every single day I try to improve my mindset, but the first step is acknowledging it. Anyways, subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.